Hey, hey, how's it going? What are you doing? Good. Working on my uh, space horse here. Amazing. Getting her ready for a ride. You want to teach us all about touring bikes? I do. Tell you all about touring bikes. Some weekender bikes, bikes that you can use city and touring. So we've got lots of options. Should we get a bottle of wine for that? We should do it. So the first thing about a touring bike is the frame is generally steel. Steel is more durable, uh, longer lasting. So if you're out on the road and you happen to have a fall, have a bit of an accident, less likely to damage your frame and you can keep on going. Um, the other thing is the geometry. So a touring bike is a road bike, but the geometry is generally more relaxed. So you have a much more upright positioning. Uh, your top tube here is generally going to be longer uh, to help with that positioning. And um, the wheelbase, which is essentially your chain stays here, should be longer to accommodate having a rear rack. So when you have a rear rack, you can put panniers like this on and having a longer wheelbase enables you to have clearance so that when you're pedaling, your heel is not going to be hitting the bags. The other thing about the frame is a lot of modern touring bikes come with eyelets, such as on the rear where my rack is bolted in here. Um, eyelets to attach your fenders. Also a front rack, uh, because while you're touring, of course, you're going to be carrying your stuff, generally a lot of stuff. It could be quite heavy, especially if you're going camping. Um, so having an eyeleted frame is very important. Um, generally, you'll have eyelets uh, for water bottle cages here. So two, sometimes even three, a third underneath. So I've got a water bottle here. I've, since I'm riding in the city right now, I've put my, uh, my Bordeaux uh, folding lock instead of the water bottle cage. But when I went touring, I'd probably take off the lock. Don't really end up using a lock much touring. Um, and have a second water bottle cage that's accessible while you're riding. Another thing I added was a front handlebar bag. So I've got a rack mounted to the fork um, and I've got this handlebar bag sitting on there but it's also mounted to something called a decaler and the decaler attaches to the stem. I can just lift off the handlebar bag here like that. It has a shoulder strap so say you're out on the road and you want to go into a restaurant, grab a snack, use the washroom. You might have your camera in the front, you might have some snacks, your wallet, all of your valuables it's closer to you. You can just pop that off run in to do whatever you need, come back, and it just fits right back into the decaler here. So I've got an upright stem, I've got a fairly wide handlebar, uh, also with a fairly upright angle, so that I can ride in three different positions. I can have my hands here on the flat part, I could be riding on the hoods here, or if I'm going downhill and I want to get some speed, I could be riding in the drops. Um, Traditional tour bikes tend to have bar end shifters here, um, just because you know it's easy enough to keep that hand position, go from the flat right down to the bar end shifter. I opted to have uh, STI shifters, so Shimano Total Integration, um, just because I'm using my bike sometimes in the city on weekend rides, so I wanted it to be a little bit more performance oriented. Um, so what its STI shifter is, it's integrating both your shifting and your braking. So these are my brakes here and you've got uh, shifting going up gear and down gear. So one thing you'll see on uh, most traditional touring bikes is a triple front chain ring. So you've got three gears on the front and then you know anywhere from eight, nine, 10 speeds on the rear. Um, the reason to have a third gear, or what we often refer to as a granny gear, is because when you're touring and you're flo fully loaded, um, so you might have a handlebar bag, you might have your panniers in the rear, you could be adding 50 or 60 pounds to your bike. If you're going to be hitting a hill, you want to have a lower gearing to be able to get up that hill. So it's not something you would use that often, but it does come in handy uh, when you're, you know, doing especially mountainous or, or hilly terrain. The other thing that's really important touring because of all of the weight that's on the bike is to have really solid wheels. So a uh, standard wheel has 32 spokes. Um, often in touring bikes you're going to go with a 36 spoke wheel so it's just a little bit more durable especially in the rear because generally people will load have panniers heavier in the rear um, so you have a 36 spoke rear sometimes the, uh, the same with the front uh, fenders are also very important so if you're out touring for more than a day you are surely going to hit some rain at some point um, so I have these Velo Orange fenders which are aluminum they're fairly white, lightweight um, but they're very sturdy very durable they wrap completely around the tire, um, so it keeps you dry. 
The tires are very important. You really don't want to be getting flats all the time really out on the road. It really slows you down. Um, so I have these Schwalbe Marathon Plus, very well-known tire that has a Kevlar lining. So I do have yet to get a flat on these tires after a year. It also, they're also a bit wider than a standard road tire. So the wheel size is 700 and then you go with the width of the tire. So I've got 32 millimeter wide. A lot of people will tour on something that's 35, maybe even a 40 if you're gonna be doing a lot of off-roading. So it really depends on where you're riding. The other things on my bike, I've got cantilever brakes. Um, less likely to be tracking mud if you end up doing off-road. Some touring bikes are going with disc brakes now, really nice uh, braking efficiency, uh, but can be a little bit more maintenance to take care of. A nice leather brook saddle. So this is something that um, starts to really wear in the more that you use it. And out on the road, it you know, nice and comfortable. I've got leather bar tape to match it, you know, which is really comfy on your hands because if you're, you know, you're doing, as I mentioned, eight, nine, ten hours on the bike, you want that to be comfortable. So that's really what differs a touring bike from a regular city bike or a regular road racing bike. Um, it's generally something that is going to be a bit heavier, but it'll be more durable. It's going to handle the weight, it's going to handle the distance, it's going to be comfortable, and uh, that's really what it comes down to. Cheers. Cheers. Two men, not so afraid to have a little rosé together. <laughs> that's really fun trying a touring bike. I mean, I haven't tried a bike with gears in years, probably. Yeah, I mean, you're used, to, city bike you're used to riding your single speed yeah. for the coaster brake. Yeah. You know, I really like those paddle brakes. Yeah, the, the STI shifters. STI shifters. Yeah. yeah. That's like, it seems like that could be like an instrument you know, it becomes for muscle memory pretty fast, I imagine. Exactly. Most race bikes nowadays are using um, aluminum frames and, and carbon frames. You know, there's still some steel framed racing bikes, but, yeah. um, you know, originally bikes were all, were all made out of steel. And, um, you know, bikes were used for transportation and they were used for essentially moving people and things. So you wanted a good durable bike. And when you're touring, you know, sure, I mean, you might be wearing like gray shorts and padded shorts and jerseys and everything, but you see a lot less of the kind of uh, branded sort of shirts. It's still really, there's really that classic style element to it. Yeah. Um, and it's not always about what's newest, what's the most high tech development in bikes. It's really what's classic, what works best, and what looks great. And uh, that's. That's what speaks to me about it. Yeah, I, I agree. One thing that I that I really like about touring bikes, and especially classic touring bikes, is the aesthetic as well. Right. Um, and it's something that you know, especially this all city here. So this is a company from Minneapolis. This model is called the Space Horse. And I just really like the the frame colors, the decaling they're doing. You know, it's really vintage inspired. It does look like an old bike. Yeah, and um, especially, you know, with the leather saddle and the bar tape, the wine rack and the, the racks. I mean, this is really inspired by vintage parts, and that's really my, my style in a bike. You know, I have a carbon race bike. I've got city bikes, but this is not the fastest bike that I own, but it's definitely comfortable, and it's so multi-purpose. Right. You know, I ride it around the city. I ride it to the market when I need groceries. I load up my panniers. You know, we just rode up Mount Royal. We did some of these off-road trails that usually mountain bikes are going on. Yeah, um, pretty flexible. You, know, you could, before I had my, my carbon road bike, I'd take this out even to the racetrack and I would, you know, be, be training on it, exercising on it. So this, this model especially is sort of like, it's an all-in-one kind of bike. I can tell right away that I'm hooked on this. I wanted to do it for a while and, and riding a bike like this feels really good. I want to do some touring. So maybe next time you could tell me about what kind of stuff I need to do, a camping trip in the country sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, we could we could go to my shop and we could show you um, types of racks and panniers and maybe some, some good lights and then we could, you know, even look into uh, lightweight tents and sleeping bags and everything that we need to, you know, go do a weekend trip and um, how it's all going to fit on the bike, how it's going to install on the bike properly and safely and um, go for a ride. I'm in. Sweet. Cheers. Cheers.